friends, it's Pat Sloan here. Today we kick off high tea, which is using my drawing room fabric. There it is, all made up, the quilt. So we're gonna walk through, I'm gonna tell you the process and the schedule, if you're going to sort of be doing it weekly, like I'll be sharing. But first, first, what are the other things today? We have, it is tree week. So I would love to see quilts with trees. Uh, it can have one tree, it can have many trees. I mean, we just did the star quilt with the tree in the center from Wendy Shepard's book and the Christmas fabrics, although some of you did them in other kind of fabrics. And so that's a tree quilt. Uh, so there's lots and lots of tree quilts. It's a very classic quilt image to use. And so I think it'd be super exciting to see the variations that you all have in your collection of quilts that you've made. The other thing, it is Turtle Adoption Day. Uh, <laughs> who had his turtle as a kid? Yes, I had a turtle, little, you know, those little bitty witty ones for a very short time. We had a little turtle. Um, I don't know what happened to that, but you know, those, that's what, somehow I just don't remember it not being there anymore. Uh, <laughs> I've never done a turtle on a quilt uh, that I can remember. And there's, applique turtles you could do turtles using like the drunkard's path block and things like that so if you also have a turtle quilt share that one that'll be super fun and also were you able to watch the bonus video that i did on saturday evening uh, i just thought it would be kind of fun to do that and add because i had those extra things to talk about uh, and so it was kind of fun to do that extra one and then see a different group of you in the chat Portion. When the video runs for the first time, we have a live chat. So I was in the chat um, and so were a bunch of the moderators and ambassadors, uh, you know, talking with you. And so that was super fun. I might do those occasionally. They need to be on sun Saturday night um, because there's a, if I do them on a weekday, uh, then there's another video that comes right away the next morning and it's just too much. It, it messes people up and they don't watch either I get low view counts. You don't watch them both. But if I do, I'm thinking if I do one every so often on a Saturday night, uh, just to have a little, have an evening one and a little bit of a chat. So, okay. Let me know in the comments. Let me know in the comments below if you participated in the evening. I know it wasn't in advance because I just did it spur of the moment. On Friday, I decided I would do it on Saturday. So, that's why. Um, but if you had a little bit more notice, would you join in? Did you enjoy seeing having one on Saturday evening that you could watch on Sunday at some point? Let me know. I'd love to hear your feedback on it. Uh, that would be super good. <laughs> okay, so I, I am going to show you some pictures of Critter Quilt number one uh, with some of its new owners at the school. Mary Jo, who was the organizer for the uh, Valley Element, well, different elementary schools in um, up in in Maryland, uh, she is a, one of the is a guild member. She's a quilter, and so Kathy, that's Kathy's friend. So our ambassador Kathy, um, that's her contact. But she said um, Mary Jo asked, could she take it to her guild meeting to let everybody see it and enjoy it before she takes it, you know, has it permanently stay at the library and not leave again? And I said, yes, of course. So this picture is Kathy there is with the microphone and Mary Jo is in the pink, I believe. And they were holding the quilt up at the guild meeting and Kathy was telling the story about how it came to be and what it was all about. And then this next picture is actually at Valley Elementary School in Jefferson, Maryland. Sherry Thomas is the librarian for that elementary school and Mary Jo uh, is there with her holding the quilt up. So it is now at the school permanently, it's permanent location. So this is just so exciting, so fun. Thank you all for uh, sending the blocks, for generating such a fun uh, pro, you know, process, a fun thing to do with them. Uh, it's like to make a quilt, yeah. So um, I've, I've, um, I can't remember whether I showed you the label on the critter quilt. So this is it, and I put the names of everybody that made the blocks, and it just what came out so well. Critter quilt number two is being quilted. And that one is going to be going to our ambassador, Lylene, to a facility near where she lives. And so we'll tell you more once that is done. And I'll show it to you before it goes and get the binding on it, get a label on it, 
Uh, so it's a, it's a bit more work still to do. And then it will go out there, probably ship to her after the holiday season because I do not want it in the Christmas package shipping, uh, you know, <laughs> craziness, craziness. Uh, so that'll happen then. Now I will start on Critter Quilt number three in January. I'm taking a break in December from the Critter Quilts to just sort of let my mind, you know, not have to be focused on that and uh, keep my design wall so I can just do some other things on it. Because once I put it on the design wall, it tends to be like it, it needs to stay there till I get it all sewn together. And so I want to take like a few days in early January probably and make that happen. So um, we, our sew alongs will just be more blocks at that point. I won't be needing to put them up on the wall. So early January, I'll work on the last and final Critter Quilt, which is number three, which has a lot more earth tones. So it'll be uh, fun to see what we do with that one, how that plays out and how it comes together and, you know, what kind of accent fabric I use to, you know, pull, pull all those blocks together. Okay, let's talk about high tea. Now, the thing is this quilt, we're gonna call it high tea because when the Fat Quarter Shop does kits, we're using a Fat Quarter Shop pattern called Castle, Castle Courtyard. Oh, I got it over there, Castle Courtyard. So Castle Courtyard is the actual pattern, but when the Fat Quarter Shop makes a kit, they give it another name just so um, because they make kits from the same patterns in different fabrics than what are used in the original pattern. And so they, they use a different name to be sure there's no confusion. Uh, so this is called high tea. So we're gonna call it high tea because I like that name. Uh, and there is just some components. It's super fun. There's two blocks and you make all of them identical, but does it look like they're all identical? No, no, there's magic. There's lots of magic that happens to, to get it to look like this. But what you'll see is, let me just show you, um, you've got a distinct, a really distinct uh, chain effect going on. And, and in mind using drawing room, I've got a distinct, you can see, like blue, like you can see one this way is blue, and then there, I'm trying to see if I've got my hand right. Okay, I'm just gonna put my hand here. <laughs> that way is blue and this way is the browns and the blacks and so you get that you know very distinct chain effect going on uh, there's two cream colors and I'm going to work and walk you through you can see it's sitting here waiting there's the piles of fabric we're going to walk through what the fabrics are so you can see them exactly and then a little bit about the construction because i construct a little bit differently than the pattern so i'll just tell you how i approach it and you can do it whichever way you like so we're going to go ahead and get to the other side of the table so the pattern will have this guide that shows you all the fabrics so if you're using my fabrics and you want to lay them out you know in a, like a little swatch or something or if you're using other fabrics and you want to use that this is perfect so you can see exactly then what your fabrics are when you are looking at it and you might also just print a copy in black and white if you don't want to be distracted by the colors that are on the color copy uh, if you you know that can be distracting if you're like no that the red fabric should always be you know you know, yellow or something like that. Uh, it's hard sometimes for your brain because you keep seeing the red. And if you have red in another position, you know, it can get really, really confusing. So you might just do a black and white copy. So that is a little guide sheet that you can use. Now the pattern itself is written for strip cutting. You're cutting strips. Let me just show you. You'll be cutting strips and then um, sub cutting. So I'm going to tell you what that means so you can see see what all that is on here i've got all the sizes covered up okay so you're cut you have strips that you'll be sewing together and then you'll sub cut that's the term that i use where you take the strip after it's sewn together and you'll slice it into the units the small units so you get units that look like this uh, and that is the whole process for the checkerboard block so there's two blocks in the quilt there's a checkerboard and the star um, and so that is, that is the, the, the way the pattern is written. Now let's, dis let's discuss because I, for, I, for some reason, I am a person who just does not prefer 
cutting strips and sewing them and sub cutting very often. You'll notice a lot of my patterns, I just cut the squares. And I think it's because I just really prefer the control of knowing where the placement is. Um, does it work? Yes, it absolutely works. And a lot of you absolutely love it. And it is so cool that this pattern for uh, is written that way so that you can go to town, cut the strips. Is it faster? Probably. <laughs> I don't know for sure, but I never tested it. But I would assume it might, might be faster. Uh, so I am going to make one of the blocks, one of the checkerboard blocks and lay out the, um, <laughs> lay out the fabric so that you can see them. But I'm first going to show you my um, drawing room fabric as it is before we get to the block. Just, you know, just the fabrics that are used in this quilt. So you get an idea. So first up, there are two lights, you know, real, really, two lights that that are um, used to make the design and I'm taking the cream color it's the one with the sort of um, tone on it. well you can see it here this paisley design but on, it's on here as well now this one is used behind the star so behind the star will be this fabric and then the tan which will be that stronger line that goes uh, through the quilt so you do need to have something that does that for you to get the chain, to get that chain effect, um, is you need one fabric. None of these fabrics are, these are not, this is not a fat quarter um, project. You need half yards up to two and a, like up to two and a half yards. So look at the supply list. You know, you need some yardage of this because it's not like little scraps. Although, you probably could use scraps if you wanted. Your design is just that, that the, the cross part of the design, it's just not going to be as distinct if you're not using the same fabrics for those. But you could use scraps for the other parts of the checkerboard. Okay, so we have those two. The inside of the star is this one. Same print, but in the black where you can, you can it's like in black and gray. There's also one that's a deeper black, but we're not using that one. Uh, so it's the black and gray. Now on the corners of the star are these four. So there is the large, beautiful um, floral. So this has got the floral that's on the, the black with the tan and everything. And then the medium blue of this paisley, the uh, larger floral in the light blue. Isn't this gorgeous? Oh my goodness, I love it. And then the little um, medallions. They remind me of like the little Italian cut beadwork. Uh, so yeah, there you go for our drawing room. Now, the other fabrics, you're gonna need some of these again in the checkerboard, but then you will also use the big gorgeous floral on tan. Ah, oh, this is just so cool. And the paisley, look how classic that is. Oh, the black, gray, and tan. And then this is the medallion design. So we'll be using that one. And then the medallion, a little bit different medallion design uh, with the yellow in it, blue and yellow. And then this guy here. So these are actually the same. They just look, they look different because you've got the colors. Uh, so then the, this one was all the blue. So you've got more of the tonal ones and then the one with multicolor. That's the way, that's the way to say it, Pat. That's the way to say it. Okay, you're gonna need, at least I am, you're gonna need a design board to put the checkerboard on. And we end up, we'll be making 13 checkerboards and 12 stars. So before we, before I cut these and make one, lay out one checkerboard, I'm gonna just go back to the quilt again and just talk about how we're gonna walk through to make it over a several week time period. So today we're gonna to concentrate just on the checkerboard block, making a checkerboard block. And so this week I will show you the fabrics, I'll pin it down, we'll, I'll make one checkerboard. Next week I'll make one star block. So here's the star block and you will do 20, 12 of the star blocks, 13 of the checkerboards. So then, then you have enough after that to sew the first two rows. You forget all the blocks made and then we'll be sew a row, sew a row, sew a row. So that's five rows. Um, so the first two is the block, the star, 
then so row three, row four, row five, uh, and then finish up finish up the sew along. This one I did not add a border on as you'll notice. Uh, the pattern does not have a border so we didn't add one at all. The blocks are big um, so I didn't I decided just not to add any any border onto it. Uh, my backing on here is the wide back that comes with the line in the tan. So just like I showed you the large scale tan print the backing is a bigger scale of the same thing, which is so fabulous for backing. So there's some really, really gorgeous backings for, uh, for drawing room. Okay. So that is the, that's the plan. So let's go over and see how it looks on the design board. What I would recommend is that you look at your fabrics. If you're not using mine and following kind of this formula, which has it all laid out for you. Uh, if you're not doing that, you, you probably should audition your fabrics a little bit. Now mine has the tan. So let me get this out of the way. Okay. So the tan is what's going like in an X. So that there's a tan this way and a tan that way of blocks. These um, four blocks towards the center lock in with the black. Oh, not this black. Not that black, this black, the medallion black. So they lock in with this black. Um, the other one is for the, that's for the star. Okay, so it locks in with that. So you need to have these two in order to get the effect. After that, I think you could go scrappy, but if you've, if you've got these two the same in every block, you're going to have that unity and that cohesion for your quilt that'll give you the look of mine. Um, not that you couldn't do it another way, but if you want the look of mine and you're trying to use other fabric, these are your two keys. Get this one and this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these two first and put them on the design board. Here it is. This is the structure of your block and you'll be doing each block in this identical structure so that you get this chain effect. You get that tan, which will have uh, the kind of like the blues running along it, the blue, the blue fabrics. And then you have this darker center, which gives that pop effect. Uh, and I would recommend if you wanted to have the same look that you will do the, do the dark, really dark and um, get that contrast in there. So now the next pieces that are critical are the light. This one, this one right here in this block, because when it goes in a specific location, that fabric so that it blends uh, visually into the star block and gives that look that the quilt has. If you don't put them in those positions, you will not have the same look. And those positions are one, two, three, four. They're all next to the black. So let me cut that one. Here are the kind of off white and they will be sewn in these positions. And then that way they will touch that same fabric that's around the star and give this angle on that block as it meets. It's, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful idea. The two blocks combining, they make this kind of secondary image happen. All right. So from there we have, um, eight more squares to cut and I will cut those fabrics and show you where they're placed. Here are the rest of the colors laid out. You have one of each per block of this tan paisley, the very light blue with the big floral, the medallion, the black and gray paisley, the large black medallion, the yellow medallion, uh, the blue paisley, and the sort of milliflory little um, bead kind of design. So one of each of those. So I'm going to sew this up and meet you on the other side to show you the block's magic. The block is sewn. And so this is what I'll call it the checkerboard block looks like. Now I want to show you where it is up on the quilt. And then what's going to happen? The magical part. So it's over here. So this one, can you see it? Yeah. So this is this corner right here. So that's how that one is set up. Now, when you take it and you go to the next position, you're just pretty much going to be rotating blocks, rotating, you know, just depending on if you want to follow the picture exactly, you can do that. I'm just sort of giving you an example here rotating the blocks. And so it's the same block, but it's just rotated around the quilt. Um, 
Very, very cool. Very, very fun effect. Now what I am going to do is make uh, a row. Now, I was thinking of putting it on my coffee table, which means it can only be four blocks. There's five blocks across. Three checkerboards and two stars. Uh, if I only do four, there, you know, then it alternates three stars, two checkerboards, you know, you know that. Um, but if I'm going to do it, my table, it would just need to be two and two. And then I have to decide, do I want to have this whole image? And I'm not sure, that might be too wide for my, um, that might be too wide for my table. So if it is, it won't have these parts when I do it. So basically I'm going to make the four blocks and then decide. Now, if you are interested in doing like a table, I mean a bed runner, I think this would be a gorgeous bed runner where you would actually do another row on the top and the bottom to include this point that comes out. This is the image, the secondary image that comes out from these two blocks. And that's why that placement of those whites are really, really important so that you get that. Otherwise, it's lost. So if you want to do a table runner, I mean a bed runner, bed runner, bed runner, <laughs> get it in my head, uh, I would do the extra row on the top and bottom to make that as a gorgeous bed runner. And then if you wanted it a little bit wider, you could um, make one more block or you could just put like some you know, squares on the end, you know, to extend it out just a little bit more, which would be super cute. You could do like one more on each side to extend it out for a little bit longer. And bed runners are put, uh, they're decoration. They're put on the end of the bed. Although sometimes people will have them to protect, like if you sit on the end of the bed to put on your shoes or you want to set something on the bed, it kind of protects them. They put them on in hotels and things so that it does actually protect the, the end of the bed where a lot of people end up sitting. You know, you go there and put your shoes on or put your bags at the end of the bed. At least that's what we did. Uh, but this would be so pretty and you could make it in colors that match your bedroom uh, or your decor. So, okay. So for this week, we are making the checkerboards. And then next week we'll talk about the star and uh, we'll, get, we'll get Rose done and I'll do some sort of a runner. I don't know, we'll see what I do. See if I do a whole bed runner it might be kind of fun just to make one and see what it looks like. They could also be, you could also hang it you know, like as a wall hanging, that would be very pretty. All right, my friend, <laughs> I love you. Mwah. Thank you for being here in the Sloan Zone. I will see you online. Mm -hmm.